Hey, this is virtual YouTuber Leon. And virtual YouTuber Alice. And today... Leon's programming? We're making a game. <laughs> <laughs> we're making a visual novel, I guess. Is that a, is that a game? Let's say I it's mean, a game. It, it is a form of game. I guess it's, a, it's sort of a game. I'll call it a game. For the purpose of this stream, we'll call it a game. And we're missing a chat from Johnny, but on the off chance he drops by. Hi, Johnny. Thank you for the comment earlier. And hello, <laughs> Neko. Hello, Razor. Hello, Tamer. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, uh, we got a couple comments that they can't make it. <laughs> Sorry for uh, making this at a different time than usual, but we try to do that on Saturdays. Okay? Yeah. Oh, he okay. considers them the same tier as ebooks. Ebooks. Ebooks aren't real books. Hmm. Well, you, there is gameplay. The gameplay is choosing your. Which way you go? One way or the mm. other? Hey, Nico's still there. Hey, Nico. <laughs> for now. Hello, Epic. Hey, Epic. Thanks for stopping by. <clears throat> so, um, we'll start. Yeah. I have here set up. So, I'm here to look pretty. <clears throat> here, um, you're here to tell stories and sing. Uh, <laughs> based, Alice. Based. Although this is the first time I get to listen to the music play. Oh, really? Yeah, because normally you did it during Minecraft or something. Oh, yeah, and you weren't here. Yeah. Okay, so... Well, this is what we're doing. We're going to create... Um, JavaScript-based... Using Canvas. An HTML Canvas. HTML5 Canvas. Which is kind of like a... Painting part of HTML <clears throat> um, and it's all going to be JavaScript based. Music is really nice. Yeah, I I really like uh, Wintergatum. I believe uh, the music is on description. Ah, let me make sure. Yep. Yeah, okay, it is. Sweet. If it wasn't, I was going to go find it. Is there a reason you picked JavaScript? Um, there's several reasons, actually. Uh, JavaScript is web-based. It's web-native, so uh, it can be supported to by most browsers. So most people will be able to run this program just by opening in the HTML page. And speaking of the HTML page, uh, we're, that's the first thing we're going to create. See you all in three hours. See ya, Nico. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. So the first thing you have to do when you create an HTML page is do this thing called the doc type. The doc type kind of tells the browser what version of HTML to render and stuff. Uh, that's pretty much standard code, so I am just gonna copy paste the boilerplate doc type. So it's this thing, doc type, and then you get your HTML tags in your head and your body. Hello, Lance. VS, <laughs> VS Code chats unite. <laughs> hey, Lance. <laughs> and yeah, I'm using VS Code. It's uh, Visual Studio Code. You can. It's, it's, I think it's open source. I don't know. But you can download it and uh, start messing around with all types of code. It's very versatile. So we got the boilerplate code, boilerplate HTML. We're actually not going to do much HTML. We just have to set it up so that the canvas is there. Oh, I'm like, I actually recognize the <laughs> HTML. <clears throat> and what we're going to do in the head part. We're gonna title our web page uh, Moon VN Engine. Just to, to say something. And then, as well in the head, what we want to do is do a link. Mm -hmm. So, this will link to the style that we want to do because we want to do a little styling we, we're not doing that much styling but it's a little style on the html so is that like the css type yeah thing? basically we're gonna okay. do the css i actually know that one a little bit very little so we're just gonna kind of uh <clears throat> i'm just looking at my reference here so i already did this before we're just kind of replaying it oh my god we barely fits in on screen here <laughs> can you even see that well anyway it's 
It's all just a CSS file and we're pointing to it. Maybe we can make it a little bigger here. Like that. And then... You're making an engine right now. Are you going to make some dev tools later? Making an engine or are you going to make some dev tools later? I'm not sure what they mean by dev tools. We'll see. Well, it, it's a very, very simple engine, by the way. So that um, I will make this code available, though. So I, at the end, I'll, I'll post the GitLab link with the code um, pushed in there. So you'll be able to download this code and do whatever you want with it. I think I released it under some open source like open source uh, uh, license, so you should be able to play around with it. I'm not point. I'm not posting it yet, so so it's a surprise at the end how it's gonna look. So no one just goes and runs it. Oh, that makes sense. <clears throat> Although it, the GitLab is public, so you should be able to just download it or search for it if you try hard enough. Aye, aye, I'll get right on it, Captain. <laughs> um, where were we? We really need to finish this HTML and get out. <laughs> so we're going to link to the CSS. Okay. And then we, in the body itself, well, after the body, no, we need to do another link. Uh, we need a script. So this is linking to the JavaScript itself. And then we're going to make a folder called J JS. And then we'll just say VN main. And there are probably better ways to do everything I'm going to make, uh, be doing. But this is the way that I understand it the best. So... Not, the point is not to make the best program ever. The point is to make something easy to explain or and easy to... Quick and easy. Easy to, like, look at. And, you know, be a little bit entertaining. No worries. Yeah, it's basics. Yeah, it's, it's pretty basic. My My goal is to have something that does look like a video game by the end. Or a visual novel. And then we're gonna make a div. And then we're gonna make it a CSS class, a styling class. And then we'll just call it uh, VN container. And then in here is the main part. We're gonna make a canvas object. And then we're just gonna call it VN screen. And then we're gonna give it a class. Uh, VN screen is again. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and then, because in my head, visual novels are all old, oldy kind of things, mm -hmm. we're gonna make it 800 by 600, a very classic old uh, resolution. That you would. Uh... Should it be width or width? Yes. It should be wood. I'm just checking because I don't know. And then I hope that the script works up here. So over here I have the index pointing at the index. So if we look at it, these are the tools of it. You can see there that it gives me error not found because we haven't created it yet. So all we have right now is the HTML thing. HTML thing. So we want to create a couple folders, one for the JavaScript and one for the CSS. So we'll make the CSS first, the folder, and just CSS, because we're pointing at it right here in this ref. And we want to create this uh, CSS file. Mm -hmm. File. <laughs> I'm pretending I knowing, know what's going on. In the actual CSS file, we actually have two classes here. Let me 
me get rid of that. We have the VN container and the VN screen. So for the VN screen, we're, we'll just make a VN screen. And the VN screen is the um, actual canvas itself, and the canvas will just give it like a like a border. We're, we're making a border. Okay. And we're making it two pixels wide. And we're making it solid, solid, and we're just making it black. To have something and then the VN container which is the div that houses the canvas we're gonna try to uh, uh, we're gonna try to center it so it's in the middle of the screen so the way you do that in CSS it's very wonky but we're gonna tell it from the top I want it 60 pixels down and from the left, I want it to be auto margined. So that basically means it's gonna try to put it in the middle. And you gotta give it the width of your thing. So it's 800 pixels wide, mm -hmm. the canvas. So it'll make the div 800 pixels and center it. So now that we have those two, if we refresh this, we can see that we have our canvas with a border. So we're getting somewhere and it's centered. So if I make this bigger, you can sort of see that it's in the middle. Woo -woo. So, but we'll keep it small for now. Okay. There. Okay. Uh, oh, and it is uh, 60 pixels from the top. There. So we're getting somewhere. We still, if we look at the console output of the Chrome, we still don't have the main JS, mm. so we should probably create that. So if we go back over here to our code, um, we have the CSS. <laughs> Heep. Sorry. We'll create a um, uh, what is it called? JavaScript, just JS. And inside of that, uh, what did we call it? <laughs> Heep. Oh, right here. VN main. JS. Okay, no file, VN in. This will be our main file. Um, there's ways to split your code up into different files, but then you there's some rules that you have to go around with. So for today, even though it's not the best practice, we're just going to do everything in the main one. <laughs> Um, later on, we'll go if we create mo if we continue this program, we'll split it up into several JavaScript uh, files. And hey, Blitzen, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> Thought a seagull broke into your house first. <laughs> a sea uh, we we just have a seagull here always. It's weird. It makes weird noises like that. <clears throat> doing the yandere dev <laughs> I'm hoping to finish today so no and we don't need the CSS or the HTML thing anymore from now on everything is JavaScript ah everything let's go exactly like in the simulations <laughs> it's a it's a short program it's, it's only about 250, 250 lines of code, so it's not that, that bad. Once you start getting into 500, I, the main one main thing is bad. <laughs> and this is not like educational purposes. This is mostly just entertainment. So don't do this, please. Do it. We will do some better code practice later. <laughs> but for now, this is what we get. <laughs> So the first thing we want to do is uh, in this canvas, we want to put a background, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to put a, like a little UI thing here where we're going to put the text. Print ara ara. Print ara ara. <laughs> Super sexy boom boom bingo pie and we want to chant. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. So. 
<clears throat> we're gonna create a function, which is basically a thing you call that uh, organizes your code. Um, we're just gonna call it draw. Right? Well, function draw. And this will be our function that takes care of everything. So, mm -hmm. we shall, inside of the draw function, we're going to call several things. First, we need to, what the first thing we need to do is uh, create a function, or create a variable called uh, canvas. We're basically getting the canvas object from here. Mm -hmm. And the canvas object is what allows us to manipulate everything in there. So from the canvas, we do document. Oh, it's equal to document dot get element by ID. And I'm pretty sure we called it VN screen. I have zero experience with JavaScript, but I did some with ESP32 MicroPython. Oh, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> ESP32 MicroPython, is that like uh, some sort of assembly, assembly wraparound or something for microchips? The JavaScript is so high level that it's ridiculous. Man, this is not going to... Oh, there you oh. go. So we have the... Just to double check, I'm gonna see what I named it. Yeah, we get this ID and then mm -hmm. is this one. So yeah, it's VN screen. So we get the canvas from the from there. And then what we want to do first is draw some image. Draw. Um, yeah, let's start with that. Let's draw some images. Well, even though it's a little complicated than canvas, we'll we'll start with the drawing the images. So draw images. For now, what we're gonna do is give it the canvas and we'll create this function. So, and then it receives the canvas. It's a microcontroller chip that loads code in Flash. Ah, that sounds interesting. I've only done a little bit of a microcontroller programming and mostly in school. The stuff I do is usually really high level like uh, web page stuff and uh, like business role kind of thing. It... <laughs> but I always wanted to do more microcontroller stuff because it... you can see your code do stuff instantly in real life rather than in some server somewhere. Mm. I see, I see. <sighs> All right, so the draw images, it's gonna need a canvas. And from the canvas, we do this thing where we get the context. And the context um, basically gives you control over the specific space you want. So you do get context. And then you tell it, I want the context to be 2D. So we get 2D controls over stuff. And that should be equals. So we, we get this context to D. And from this context to D, what we can do is... Uh... Mm -hmm. Draw images. <laughs> so... <clears throat> so this is where it, it gets complicated. Because you can't draw an image until it's loaded. And to know that an image is loaded, you need a callback function. <laughs> And what that does is uh, when so when something is done, it calls the function. It calls it back, right? So uh, this is a weird JavaScript. Um, if you don't know JavaScript and you just know any other programming language, callbacks are very big in JavaScript. They're not as big in other ones because JavaScript is very web-based. So a lot of things have to happen at the same time in the web. So an image has to load right here and an image has to load right here. So they can load at the same time. 
JavaScript wise, right? But normally in programming languages, just it, it's like one thread. It's very weird that we do multi-thread stuff, unless you're actually doing something that way. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is we need a callback function. <laughs> Shenzhen i slash o stream win. Shenzhen i. <laughs> I'm not actually not sure what that is. Shenzhen <laughs> IO. It's for async programming. Basically, a lot of things happen async in JavaScript. So, what we gotta do mm -hmm. is I'm gonna create another function that guarantees uh, my stuff is loaded. So, I'm gonna make a load function. And then just for simplicity, because we're um, just making a, a normal, like a quick thing, we're going to make a variable. And variables are uh, variables that you can access globally. We're going to call it Leon image because I have a, a, an image of myself in there. Oh, you do? Yeah. And then we're going to make here another one that's uh, a room image. And what we're going to do in the load, we're going to say Leon image is equal to a new image. And this is a JavaScript object or prototype, whatever you want to call it. And what that does is uh, basically loads an image object. And then room image is equal to a new image. And then we got to get him. Uh, point at them, I suppose. So, Leon image is equal to oh, that source. S R S E is equal to. Um, we're gonna make an image folder, and then we're gonna say Leon VN. I think that's what I call it, the PNG. And then the other one should be room image source equal to image um i think i was called it boy room the png did spaces matter it, they do but i think i renamed it okay because i'm like i'm pretty sure it had a space yeah your your i took yours and i resized it and put a, okay put a little filter on it or something i don't remember so this is where the callback stuff happens Hello, Wen. Hey, Wen. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for, for stopping by. Liu Dan is there. <laughs> so what we gotta do is we're gonna do Leon image dot add event listener, and then we're gonna say when this thing loads. Um, the first the, because we're doing events, I'm just going to name it event1. And uh, JavaScript is weird like this. So... Oh, was it telling you what that did? What do you mean? When Like there was just a text box on the screen. Was it telling you what add event listener did? It does. Okay. So, so it's uh, helpful. VS Code... Yeah, VS Code has a lot of cool things like here it says expression expected. Because this means I'm creating a new, a new function that's going to... It's shorthand for creating a new function. And then if you mouse over it, it says, Oh, it has event, appends event listener, blah, 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 blah. So basically what we're, what we're trying to do is when that image loads, only when that image loads, do this function here. And the function that we're going to do... Oh, uh, it has to be in brackets. I wonder why it was... The function that we're going to do is we're going to load this other image because we want to chain the the, th the loadings. We can make them independently, but this is a way to guarantee that both of them load, that both of them are loaded. We're going to call this event2. Two. Event2. Two. And when this event happens, uh, you're not supposed to close that. When this event happens, 
We're guaranteed that Leon and Room image are, are both loaded. Canvas is kind of weird like that. So only when both of those happen, we can draw. And we call the draw function there. Mm. So that's like an async wait. Basically, yes, that's an async wait. So it's a way to async wait. You're not waiting um, because a wait kind of means that the processor goes to sleep and, and it goes. It's more like you're just kind of there and then you get a message like this, you get a load message and you're like, oh, okay, it, it, it's done loading. So what we're going to do is Don't once wait. all of this finishes, we call the load function, which loads both images and then it, it kind of waits for them, quote unquote, and then you draw. What's up? I was going to read the next part. Go for it. To wait for certain conditions to be satisfied before waiting to run the next thing. It's cool that JavaScript does it by default. Yeah, that's JavaScript's bread and butter. And anyone that wants to learn JavaScript like really well needs to really get deep into these event listers. I am more of a JavaScript mo modest, moderate, maybe novice. But and it's still really confusing to do that. This is probably one of the most black magic parts of the, of the program. So we just kind of have to trust that it'll work. So once we got the draw function, we can go back to the draw function. And we are guaranteed at this point. Let me, let me put a comment. Guaranteed at this point to have images loaded, right? <laughs> so because the, the images are loaded, uh, we can do a very simple ctx dot draw image, which is a, a function from the canvas. We can say we want to paint the room first and then Leon second, because it paints stuff on top of each other. So whatever you paint first is the background. Mm. <laughs> What's up? I'm just reading what Onichan said. Oh, yeah, I'm not interrupting you with. No, that's uh, fine. I know, <laughs> but I still want to know. And, <laughs> Come on. And I'm like, well, if my keyboard's here. I can reply. I got lost. Okay. <laughs> so, so we want to uh, paint the room first, and we want to make do it in the coordinate zero zero. So usually in video games and painting anything. Let me explain something real quick. No. I have paint open. Right? Usually, how it works is that this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Right? And then, usually you go up. Right? So this is 1-1, uh, one, one, for example. However, in most drawing things, um, Y positive this way. So this would be 1-1 one, one in most drawing, drawing things. So if you want to draw something on this side, you won't have to give it coordinates 1-1. One, one. So X is still the same, but Y is uh, flipped. So this is uh, Y equal negative 10, for example. And then this is Y equal 10. It's kind of weird. For some reason, it goes like that. I'm not sure why. Probably because the TV starts scanning this way or something. I don't know. But we have to keep those coordinates in mind whenever we draw stuff. Okay, enough paint. So these are the coordinates. Zero, zero. So it'll start drawing at this corner and then it'll end over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So CTX, and then we'll draw, draw image, and we'll say Leon, Leon image. And then the X, I think I want like two or 300. So I want Leon to not appear like here. I want him over here somewhere. 
And we still want the zero and the y axis, I think. If that doesn't work, we'll. Huh? Tweak we'll it after. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just move it around. So now that I updated that, once the main load, my end runs, it'll load this thing. It will load both images, and only after that it'll draw. And once it draws, it gets the canvas and then it draws the image. Okay. Oh! <laughs> so I'm looking at our console for errors, right? Mm -hmm. And it says, fail to load a resource, error file not found. We, we don't have Leon VN and we don't have the Boyerum thing. Um, Scrub. So, I'll create a new folder called image. And to, to, to. let me. I'm looking for the images. Uh, right, right here. And then I think you can just. There you go. Now we have Boyrom and Boyrom and there. and Leon. Yeah. So right there, you saw the the images real quick. <laughs> Sobs and single Pringle. <laughs> I want Pringles. Continue, Leah. There you go. So I refreshed the thing, and now you can see. There, it, it's getting the background's getting drawn, and Leon's getting drawn. But Leon's a little bit high. Yes. Right. Ha, a little high. So we'll tell it, make him go down 10 pixels or so. No, make him go down, I don't know, 30 pixels. No, now he's on the bottom. Your file hierarchy is, hmm. <laughs> 10 out of 10, but drill down direction directories again. We don't have that many files, so we're not, we're not there yet. It can get super messy. <laughs> nice gulp configure. I know, it's super good. <laughs> Alice made the background. <laughs> I really want that Galco figure. Actually, no, I want this other one where she's walking up or down some stairs. That that one's the one that looks the most like Galco. I want all the Galco figures. Yeah, I like Galco. <laughs> I was like, what would make it a boy room? Oh, the Sekiro figure got cut off. Yeah, there oh, was well. a Sekiro figure like over here. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> yeah. Gakko has really nice figures. <laughs> I just realized just really that you have sparkles. <laughs> For some reason, we have sparkles. <laughs> because they're pretty. Uh, I wasn't going to say no to sparkles. Anyway, we have our basic VN background, right? So now what we want is a text box and some text. I should have put a tissue box next to the bed. I know, huh? Shit. Next time. <laughs> if we continue the VN and actually make it a, a game. Um, ah, yes. Uh, to our draw function, on top of the background images, we want to create a, like, a little box. And uh, that box will be our text area. Text box! So, we'll make another function called uh, draw text area, which is where we're gonna draw our text. <clears throat> and uh, it'll take in the canvas and it'll take the, the text that we want to do. We'll just call it sample text for now, because that's what I named it before. Ah, hold on. Ah, oh, no. I got an itch. Once something itches, everything itches. But at least you're not playing something, like, super... complicated, you know? Like yeah. Fighting things. I suppose. Even then, it's funny when it happens. So, what we're gonna do... So you have to draw every single asset instead of stacking them? Basically, um... Because we're just 
have two assets right now. I, I don't. I didn't really think of uh, doing anything complicated. I just loaded both assets and painted them. Um, if we get something a lot more complicated, we want to create like an engine or like a some sort of coding pattern to load everything and get get everything organized. But this is just simple stuff. Ah. Um, I'm gonna copy some text that I had prepared beforehand. <laughs> and then we're usually gonna say, this is gonna be our text. Oh, it's like what what is happening, right? Yeah, this okay. is our, our script, quote unquote. So it's like, I wake up in the morning, something, something, something gonna be late for school. You'll be able to read it in a sec. What a scrub. Late for school. Yeah, yeah, it's like the basic visual novel thing. <laughs> I'm gonna be late for school, but I get my toast and put it in my mouth and run. And then you'll meet the love of your life. Galco. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, da -da. Drawing text area, that's what we're doing. <laughs> but Rona. <laughs> Barona, no, this is this is a visual novel. This it, it this doesn't is, exist. This doesn't exist. <laughs> this, this is our world. It's not there. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna draw the text area. So the text area here has two parts. I just divided in two parts. Mm -hmm. The first one is just the the rectangle that where stuff goes, like okay. our text background or whatever. And the second part is the writing. So let's let's do the text background first. So I'm gonna create a draw text area background. Tamer likes how you said Galco too. <laughs> Galco is the ideal woman. <laughs> <laughs> she's you always end up with she's in that chat. <laughs> Not sure what type of end this is gonna be. But for now it's just something. Um and we're gonna need the canvas for it, because the canvas is what everything it's like the background for it the, ca the campus is what is the engine that writes stuff on screen oh, basically okay. so we call functions from the canvas to do all our things and the reason we're using canvas is because it's um a very powerful tool in html5 and it and enables us to do a lot of cool things just um in the screen itself and it, it's pretty good for this type of thing, like a visual novel. We can make a visual novel real quick. Well, not real quick, but we can make something like that. Anyway, <laughs> here we, we need some decisions. So what I'm going to do is create some global variables up here. First, we want um, some numbers for the height, right? Previously, I measured some numbers, so we want it to be 150 pixels. And we want a measurement from the bottom. So we want it to be like uh, slightly not not the bottom, but slightly above the bottom. Mm. So it's kind of floating up a little. So we're going to call that margin, margin bottom. And these are all uppercase because that means that they are constants and it's a lot easier to name something up here and then call it in the code instead of just putting numbers in, in your code like here we, we don't really know what this number means it's just 300 and that's zero but if we said okay this is the margin the bottom or something then you know it's like oh it's x is margin bottom so this is a lot better um than doing this and this i'm just leaving it like that because this is all really temporary our images will be loaded some other way later if we continue it. Mm 
Uh, so here we shall do. We have to do some math. Oh God, I hate math. <laughs> Good thing it's you, not me. Good thing that we're not doing the math. The program is doing the math. So what we want to do is um, oh, I didn't finish over here. Our, I need a, a margin of the sides. I just like math too. So we'll just say five pixels. Oops, uh, five. So margin sides is going to be how how much uh, is going to be from the side. So margin bottom is how how high the box is, and margin side is how how much from the side it is, from each side, really. So what we're trying to do is have it so it's dynamic. So if you make the resolution bigger, it still works. It'll still be the text box where roughly where it is. It was it was a horrible title. I I don't think I approve. What was the title? It was uh Japanese stuff. Golden Boy is a good one though. Golden Boy. But the one Neko said was that. Uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? You're just talking about titles. Oh, they were saying they had a title for your game. Oh, okay. It depends if I just uh, just search it in general. I can get a better one. Uh huh. And it would translate to "You're going to be a mom," <laughs> which is a lot better than what the actual translator turns it into. <laughs> So, we're making some numbers here. Numbers. Oh, canvas dot width. Debell is brutal. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> DeepL is really good, actually. It, it does a much better job than many other translators. So here we're, we're getting some numbers. We want to know how big we're going to make the text area. So what we do is take the tech canvas width, which is the whole width, and then we subtract this bit and this bit. So the margin times two. So we know it's going to be this long. And we also want to know where we're going to paint it. So we want this pixel right here, which is the height. So to get that, we'll make another one. Let text area. Well, just to follow the convention. And then we'll just say, well, X is really easy to do because we'll just say, from zero, you just add the margin, and that's x. So we'll say margin. So it's equal to the margin. But y is a little more difficult. For y, what we got to do is take the height of the canvas, and then subtract the margin, and then subtract the height of the text box. And then we'll get the white coordinate to do it. Numbers. So we want the height. Height. Try not to misspell anything. Text area height, which we decided previously. And then we want the margin on the bottom. And that should give us um, this coordinate right here, which is going to be like where we're going to paint it. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, then with these, we should be able to um, paint it. So what we'll do is um, we'll get the context again, which which is what makes us enables us to draw all sorts of things. Uh, then we want two D context. Yes, yes, two D context Visual mm, Studio. Yes, yes, yes. And then what we want to do 
with the context, what you can do is say, give it a fill style. So it'll basically, basically it's the color. So what you can say is F4 E9 F5. So that's a color. I, I just picked some random pinkish color because that's what I think when I think VNs. And then CTX dot fill rect. And then fill rect is what actually creates the triangle or rectangle. And you give it the X and Y coordinates, which we previously calculated. Text area Y. And then we give it the text area width, which we calculated also. Text area width. And then text area height, we actually predetermined up here. Predetermined over here. Mm. The height is constant. The width is not. So with this, uh, we should be able to create that, uh, draw that rectangle. And I don't remember if we, no, did we mess something up? Unexpected token, well not. Oh, you did a boo boo. Well, console thirty-eight. So in. Line 38. 38. Yeah. Draw area background. Draw area background. There's a little parenthesis thing with the squiggle. Oh. So I started coding. Hold on. This is like all wrong. <laughs> there. So to draw the area text, we need to call this one. Oh, you put it inside the wrong one? Yeah. Okay. So now dryer attacks. I don't even know if we're calling dryer attacks. Pay text. attention, Alice. I am paying attention. <laughs> she is surprisingly paying attention. And Which... drawing. Draw. Oh. Draw images. Okay. Draw text area. So we're actually going to call the text area. I'm going to give it the canvas, and we're going to give it this text that we put over there. Sample text. Now, there you go. Except our thing is not showing up. Fill rex is not a function. Okay, so what I did is uh, I had a typo here. And this is pretty much how you debug stuff. You look at your console and whatever programming language you're doing. Most of the time it tells you exactly where stuff is broken. Oh. So here it says... Um, <laughs> Fill rect is not a function. Well, it's not. It should be fill rect rectangle. So I, I went over here and I, I changed it. Save it. Reload it. Aha. We have a rectangle. So we have our background for our text. Okay. But it's kind of like just a floating rectangle. So what I want to do is add like a little border. Mm hmm. And we can do it in a very similar way. So, if we go back to draw your background, we'll just say here, um, <clears throat> background. There we go. Oh, that's yeah. the little note thing, right? Yeah, these are comments. Okay. And then here we'll say the border. And for that one, the um, Canvas has this other thing called path, which we're basically um, writing. A, we're basically setting the. Um, actually, I don't know what Begin Path does. <laughs> well, you have to run <laughs> to call it. I don't remember why that does. Huh. You just remember that you have to do it. Yeah. So Canvas, sometimes you just got to do what the program tells you. So to, to do the lines, I read that I had to do that. So I did it. That's funny. But I do know what this does. Line width. 
basically make we're making the border with two pixels and then stroke style we're making a black you could also put like a number like up here so ctx dot rect Instead of fill rect is rect, so rect just does the border. And we give it the same coordinates as before. I'm just gonna copy paste them. Because we're just painting uh, the rectangle on top of it. And then you say CTX for some reason. I think it has to do with this. Uh, function before like I think you say begin path and then you tell it everything it's going to do and then you say stroke and Then it paints it So what I'm not sure sure if we should be doing that before and after the whole thing, but uh, this seems to work So if I refresh it uh -huh, Now we have a little border. I don't know how appreciated you know, how much you can see it, but it's a little border <laughs> Yeah, I can see it. Okay. It helps separate it just a little bit. So now, we drew the text background. We want to draw the text. This is where it gets complicated. This <laughs> is the whole point of uh, programming. Because what we did right now, you can do it with whatever. right? You, you can put in the website and, and do it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not that complicated. All we did was uh, paint some stuff on screen. But, but we want, what we really wanted to do is make it, the program smart enough to write our text here. And first we'll make it dumb, and then we'll make it smart. So what we'll do is say draw text. Now for the text. I need a canvas. Oops, what? No, just draw text. And then it needs a text. We're gonna give it the sample text. So we'll make another function called draw text. And then it takes a canvas and it takes the text that we're gonna write. Okay. So. Oh, excuse me. To draw. <laughs> hmm? Sorry, you are in a weird pose. <laughs> Even the debug thinks it got wrecked. Oh, Continue. Uh, I'm redoing the music. Oh, did it end? Yeah. Actually. Will you guys give me one second? I'm <gasps> drinking too much water. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I'm not supposed to be responsible for entertaining people today. Oh, oh, oh. This was supposed to be my my afternoon off. No, it's not. You're always supposed to entertain everyone. I understand nothing because I don't... Uh, Understand coding. I didn't do very well in my web design class, so I understand a little bit of CSS, but that's about it. <sighs> but yeah, I'm not supposed to be performing, not until this evening. I hope everyone has a good day. Mm, I get nervous when he leaves me alone and I don't know what to do. Oh yeah, we'll just sit here and talk in the mic all really good and quiet. Hey, how you doing? Oh yeah, yeah. You're always a perform. Perform. I'm not a performer, Leon. I'm me. You're you? I'm me. You are the performer. 
Which, by the way, I'm going to read you. You should be teaching this stuff. I understand most of the lesson. What happened? You should be teaching. You got most of the lesson. You understood most of the lesson. Yeah. Just got here. What engine are you guys using? Hello, Mary! Hey, Mary. Today's good. I'm going to work soon, though. I'll be chatting less. That's okay, Lance. That's okay. But yeah, we're, what engine? We're not really making it. We're making the engine. JavaScript? Is JavaScript oh. an engine? JavaScript and HTML5 Canvas. There you go. That That's what it is. Mm. <laughs> Where were we? We are going to draw the text. So to draw the text... Uh, uh, let me consult my notes real quick. This is better than the course I bought for... Like fifteen dollars. <laughs> oh, I hope so. I hope um you get something out of it. So to draw text, it's actually very simple to draw it itself. But um you'll see the problem once once we draw it. So what we gotta do is get the context again. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna copy paste this. There you go. Which, uh, because we're using it everywhere, there might be a better way to do it, but we'll just get it like this. And from the context, you just say context dot fill text. And then I'm actually going to make it several lines because. So this is like your X. This. And then your this is your X. Y, Y coordinate. And this is the text that you're going to do. So we'll just say text. So for our X coordinate, we want somewhere around here, right? So, oh, excuse me. So we'll just say uh, margin. So we have this thing called margin up here, margin sides. Mm -hmm. So we'll just take that margin sides and then put there. We probably want a little more, but we'll address in a second. To do this one, it's going to be similar to the Y that we did over here. So we'll take the canvas height. And we'll subtract a couple things. We'll subtract the margin bottom, for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, whoops. Which is one of the things we have up here. So we'll at least be here. But then we have to subtract that part as well, which is the text area. Excuse me. Uh, 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 minus margin bottom minus uh, text area height, right? I think, yeah, text area height. So that puts us here, I think. Uh, let's leave it like that. Let's see what happens. Okay. And then we'll call this draw text from draw function itself. Okay, we're already calling it. So, uh, what went wrong? Hmm? So one cool thing you can do in what do you call this? Chrome. You yes. can set a breakpoint, so it'll stop there in the code execution. So here we can see. Oh, okay, we're we're here. We can see that the text is that. I'm trying to move my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I just noticed. I don't know how much you can see here. Just move me. No, I mean, like, the, because it's so small. This I made big. Like, the text itself I made big, but over here is kind of small. So, all I'm doing here is seeing, am I going through it or not? <coughs> Excuse me. it is why is it not hmm. <laughs> draw area draw text fill text what's wrong it's not doing what I thought 
Uh, context? The context, right? Yeah, fill text. But what? what's it gonna put? Because you don't <coughs> have any text. <coughs> Excuse me. We do. Right there. I woke up one morning, my alarm clock, blah, blah, blah. But I don't see it in your we program. Get... It, it is there. Oh. That's, that, that was a problem. It's not there. So we're trying to solve that problem. I'm still working since yesterday. Not a good day. <laughs> Work is rough, Nico. It kind of sucks. Margin sides. Canvas height. We have that. We have that. We have that. Do we have the text? We do. You know what? Hmm. We might not be... How about this? Bring the text layer forward? Yeah, is it in front of... Yeah, because if you look at the draw text area, it's the last thing that we call. So draw is our function that we call. It draws the images, which is everything back. Mm -hmm. Then we you draw the text area. And then it draws the text background, and then it draws the text. So text is the last thing you draw. There's no draw order currently in, in this program. I don't know if I think Canvas should have something like that, but we're just relying on order of calling. But I suspect that the text is going flying everywhere. So what I'm going to do mm -hmm. is Instead of doing all these calculations, I'm going to try to write the text like it's zero, 00. <gasps> I know what happened. Hmm. I messed up. <clears throat> <laughs> you don't stay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, we can't just draw the text itself. We have to do some stuff beforehand. Okay, I think this will work. If not, I'm going to leave this commented in and see what happens. Okay, guys. This is my mistake. To draw text, Canvas has a, a special format. So you say context, font. You have to set the font. So for now, we'll just say 30 pixels, veranda. Verdana. Verdana. Let's call it Ver Verdana. And then ctx dot style, fill style. Is equal to just call it black and then <laughs> I think we should be able to just call fill text I think because we didn't have the font or the style it, it wasn't I mean that would make sense you think that it would do it automatically but no Hold on. sometimes Am I still the text? Yeah. They save it? Yeah. Hmm. You broke it. Yeah. I'm actually gonna turn off the background real quick to see. Oh, that's the text background. I wanna turn off images as well. That's kinda cool though that you can just turn it into a comment. Yeah. So so far, it's not there. Let me see if I'm missing something else. I'm consulting my... Completed one? My completed version. So we say canvas that get context and we get set the font, set the fill style. Then we do some text manipulation. And create object if needed. Da -da -da. Draw text line. And it does Does it need a, the font loaded as a resource? Um it shouldn't. Um it should use whatever HTML has. So if your browser can render it, your canvas should be able to render it render it. That's weird.
the reason I use Hello World in, at the beginnings a lot is because in programming, Hello World is like the first thing you learn. That does sound familiar. So we're not getting any errors. 61. So if I look at 61. Mm -hmm. You can see the context uh, is the same kind of. Okay. So the context is there. 10 sensor. And when I change this type of thing, change to that, you say fill text. This music track is a banger. So is assembly. <laughs> hello world. Hello world. Ah. Imagine assembly. Hello world. I, that should be working, but it's not. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are we? You are. We're actually calling the text, or else it wouldn't be getting there. He broke stuff. What if I do like 100, 100? I should put it somewhere in the middle. Unfortunately, this is also part of programming. If something breaks, it takes a while to figure out what actually broke. Let me. And I don't know anything to be able to give any input. I'm gonna look up fill text canvas real quick to see if I'm missing something. Uh, canvas get. Da, da. Here. I'm gonna copy paste this code right here, which is. Basically, what you do. So you get the canvas, you get the context, you get the font, and then you fill the text. Basic color world from the, the web. It's not working. Huh? Are we actually calling raw text? Time to scream at the sun. <laughs> Let me praise the computer and refer to the documentation. Yeah, basically, that's what you, you usually do when something's broken. You refer to the documentation. And did you see the one that said maybe var ctx equals canvas instead of let ctx equal canvas? var ctx equal canvas. So, yeah, basically, we did constant. Okay. When all else fails, you create. Here, here's what you do. When everything's breaking, you make a test.js, you put your code in there, nothing else. And then instead of calling our VN main in HTML. Hello, caveman. Hey, caveman. Oh, it's been a while. Uh, we'll call our test address. Can't get in context and no. So this is just straight out of the Oh, because it's not called campus, it's called the end screen. <laughs> well, that's probably why it wasn't working before either. You had the wrong name? Yeah. Scrap. We'll see. Uh, can I get context of null again? Mm. 
It is indeed null. Get him in by ID via screen. Did I get the wrong one? The end screen. Uh, where's the body? I'm so confused. I know. I think I know what's happening. In our index, we're actually this actually again needs to be called later. It needs to be called after everything loads. Okay. Now if we do that. Canvas document. Da, da, da. Will that work? Do we have a canvas? We have a canvas. We got a context? We got okay. Okay. So the regular hello world is working. So now instead of test, we'll oops. We'll say VN main the JS. Canvas already declared. What? Seventy two. Usually it takes me to that part, but it didn't this time. Oh okay because we still have the old code. Okay, so we know this code works. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can draw it using our own canvas. Okay, so that works, right? Uh, end, I believe. Get rid of that. And then this will be our reference code. And then we'll get back to this. Context. Okay, so canvas dot get context to D to D. Does it matter that it is this? It probably doesn't matter, but we'll see. Leon got bodied. <laughs> yeah, it could just be as simple as putting the JavaScript on the bottom, and you need it to put it after the bottom. Hello everyone, I'm KVM DCG, and this is a fake taxi stream. Bakana. I sleep no hours lately. On Saturday, I usually play online with my brother, and I can't make it to most of the time. That's fine, caveman. We're... We're here whenever. I think it was because Neko said, Caveman DCG. DCJ. Now that's a name I haven't heard in a while. Uh, <gasps> so I'm, I'm going back to the code. So we got that and then it's doing the font and it's doing that. I saw a doubt is this, but we're just going to copy it. Exactly. Uh, fill text, fill style rather. Does This one doesn't fill style, but it should be fine. Hello world, 100, 100. So, ours doesn't work. This still work. Don't worry, I still watch that cringe show you got on Twitter. <laughs> oh, uh, like that. That still works. Fill text. About. I, I don't think is this, but a world of mine.
Actually, what happens if I do this? Will that work? It just makes it very small. Oh, I'm mm. a dum dum. Yeah. Look at this. <gasps> Kill text actually takes the text first, <laughs> and then the coordinates. <laughs> So let's 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 try this. <gasps> dum dum. <clears throat> I don't know what the hell's going on. So if I do that, and I'll comment that out. There you go. Wake up in the morning. <laughs> Uh, that's what um, debugging looks like. You kind of go through a bunch of different things and try to do different things just to find something. Code used to me. Code uses main attack syntax error. It's super effective. <laughs> uh, I, well, at least we found the bug or the the issue, the error. Which is weird. This is an issue with JavaScript. Because JavaScript doesn't have very strict rules on what goes where. I gave it a number, a, a number, number in text when it expects text number, number. JavaScript doesn't give a crap. It just tries to execute it on that. And um, it doesn't work for obvious reasons. <laughs> But it doesn't give you an error either. But you just kind of have to work with that in JavaScript. I'm not fine. I can't see Leon failing at Tohu. That's okay. Next You're not week. missing much. Next week, we'll, we'll try real hard on Toho. Okay. I believe. Let me come back to this and put the text first. So it's text XY. There you go. <laughs> and let me turn on the stuff I turned off before. There you go. Ah. We have our background and some text. The text is misaligned a little bit, but yeah, we have text on the screen. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the big, big thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at my reference. It has the text first. <laughs> I don't know why I, I copied it or wrote it wrong. But anyway, let's fix the where the text is. So instead of margin sides, it's kind of too much into here. So we'll create a thing called text margin. And what did I have in my reference? I put five. So for x, we'll say margin size plus margin x, or text margin. So if I refresh it, you can see it just moved just a little bit. It just looks a little cleaner. For the y, it's quite a bit away. So there's this thing in... Um, what do you call it? Canvas, where you can kind of measure the the this length of the text. So you can see it's writing it from here up, which is nonsense because everything else draws from here down, from the corner down. Here it draws to the corner up. So we gotta figure out how big, how long the text is. 
it, it's like conflicting. What do you call it? Conflicting standards going one way and the other. So we can. Shiroshina, the final form in the, the final romance. Netflix adaptation. I wake up every morning and my wife is noisy. Ah, <laughs> uh, ain't that the truth. Um, excuse me? <laughs> You're the noisy one, because I'm still passed out. I know. You should you should wake up with me. Fuck that. I'm not a morning person. Or a day person. It's about nap time. Okay. We'll put something right here, real quick. There's this thing called measure text. It'll kind of give you the, the top, but it's, it's not exactly what we want coffee person. Coffee doesn't really wake me up. The only way it wakes me up is he goes, hey, I made you coffee. So I come down, I drink it because it's warm, and then I'm ready for bed again. <laughs> okay. So here, we're measuring the length, the, the height of the text. And we're adding it to the y-axis. So now, there you go. Wake up one morning, my alarm clock is annoying, and then it cuts off. And this this is the problem, the main problem. You can't give it a bounding, bounding box, boundary box. It would be form. nice if you could do that, but it's not that simple. So we have to create that code ourselves. <laughs> Unless they're even day and night on the moon. Yeah. The moon rotates, like, the, the Earth. So there are day-night cycles. Depending on where you live in the moon, it's it's a little different. Because the, the moon al always has the same phase facing the Earth. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you are on the face that the Earth sees... Mm -hmm. Um, I think you get a little less light. I don't I don't know exactly how it works. But it's okay. the lunar kingdom is on the other side. And every time the moon goes around the earth, um the day you can see the the sun every time. But you can rarely if ever see earth from the far side of the room or the dark side of the room because we're always facing away. And that's a big reason why the Lunar Kingdom was so isolated until a few years ago. Well, I don't know how long ago, but recently, in comparison. Active sleeping. So this is the main problem that we have. We have this really long text. And we can solve it in several ways, right? Mm -hmm. We can say, hey, make it smaller. Make it 10. But you can't read that at all. And even then, it still cuts off. Like, I don't know if you can see. So we need to do some decisions here. The There's no way for Canvas to do this for us, as far as I know. So what we'll do is will say, hey, look at every one of these words, and then if they don't fit, make a new line, right? Mm -hmm. And you can keep doing that until they don't fit over here. Then you make a new paragraph. So we're going to make a, a little program that is going to split up, take this world, split it up, this uh, string of characters or this sentence and split it up into words 
and um, it gets a little more complicated than that. But for now, we're going to split it up into words and paragraphs. Okay. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? I know that's code for something. But I don't remember what. I didn't know that. So, the way we do that. <laughs> Taking lore notes. <laughs> That's less lore and more... No, I guess it is a little lore, huh? But it, part of it is astrology. Astronomy. Astrology something else. Hi, Alice. Hi. What's up? Nothing. Tell us a story, Alice. Mm. I was playing Minecraft. Are you playing Minecraft right now? I was playing Minecraft <laughs> and I went up to this place that was built mm. and there was a sign in our house. Oh, okay. Of some punk. Yeah, I saw that sign. And I called him a bitch. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll, we'll do something in Minecraft. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. <sighs> I'm stalling because this is the hard part. This is the <laughs> hardest part of the program. So we can't just fill the text. So before we actually fill the text, we'll do this thing. Actually, here, I I'm going to do something real quick. Uh, I'm gonna do this thing called text line spacing. If I can see it. And <laughs> Alice. It looks like a porn game, not a visual novel. Basically. Is what was said. That's why I was snickering. I know. <laughs> or I figured that out later. I'm paying attention. Oh yeah? What I are got we doing lost right now? On, I got lost on what you're actually doing. But I'm uh -huh. like to the chat. I'm paying attention. Okay. I just don't want you to play Minecraft when we do this. <laughs> you, you gotta be entertaining. So basically, what we're going to do is this thing called text line spacing, which is going to give us our spacing between each line. And I'm adding it now so we don't forget. Okay. Now, if I go back. And then, just so I clean it up a bit. Let canvas height equal canvas that height and then let canvas width or canvas that width because we'll need that for later <clears throat> so here we're gonna do a function called create text object if you need it. And then it's gonna keep get the text that we're writing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it the context and the text uh, height, text line height, which we calculated before. And then <clears throat> I wanna give it the canvas width because we need all of that to calculate where we're gonna break things up. So we'll create this thing. Oh, it's a function. <sighs> and 
and it takes the text, which we're gonna break down. Which that's what we what we're doing right now. We're breaking it down so that we can um, put it on the screen. Okay. And then CTX, which is our context. Then text length height. And then canvas width. And the reason I know that we're gonna pass all this stuff is because I've did this before, <laughs> and this is kind of how it's organized. Usually you would try to do it and then they're like, oh crap, I need this one function from over there. Mm -hmm. But uh, this, this kind of was trial and error. And then first thing I want to do to create the paragraph, I want to calculate how much, how many lines fit. So we have the text line height which is what, however many pixels is this is like, I don't know, 20 pixels. So we want to say, Hey, how much is that from these? So let's see one, two, three, four. So we're going to take this length and we're going to divide it and it's going to be around four, right? Okay. But if the text changes and it gets bigger, oh, it's only three. So we're going to divide this length by this length and it'll give us the max number of lines that fit in this thing. So, max line. To be honest, I've done this before. It's always a good reason for doing it a certain way. Have you created a visual novel? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. I think I read it out a little odd. Uh, they were saying, I've done this before. It's always a good reason for doing it a certain way. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. <gasps> yeah. Usually you learn from experience. Like, the way I read it came out a little odd. Okay, yeah, I got it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to do the math floor, which is basically saying you round down. It, it's program speak for we're rounding down um, the text... Text area height, which we determined before. Mm -hmm. And then the text area line height. So this gives us some number, and then we round it down. Because even if it's there's a space here, it's fine. We just want to not go over the number of lines. Okay. The next thing we need to do is the max text width. Right, so we want whatever is right here with, with the margins and everything. So we're just getting some calculations out of the way. Okay. So let max text width is equal to, we got the canvas width from passing it in, we calculated it earlier. And then from that canvas width, so canvas width is the whole thing. So we want to subtract these two things right here. So that is um, margin margin sides times two. So that gives us the inside of this whole thing. But we also want this the margins on the left and the right of this. So we'll subtract another uh, text margin times two. So it's this little bit here and this little bit here. So that gives us exactly how much, how long it's going to be. And semicolon at the end. It's actually kind of hard programming with such a little screen. <laughs> I was wondering why everything I typed took three minutes to post. I haven't been watching it live. <laughs> Oh, that happens to me all the time. Me too. It's like, oh, why why am I seeing everyone react so fast? Why am I so slow? And I'm watching it not live. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, what we want to do is uh, uh -huh. save our object. We're going to be creating an object. 
So the object is going to store the paragraphs, the lines, and the characters for each one. And some other stuff. So what we want to do is put that object in this thing called the hash map. And what that does is um, it's a way to organize our code. And a hash map is a very fast way to access data. And it's like kind of like a, a dictionary. So you have a key. Actually, this is a good paint. Paint time. <laughs> so you have a key, right? And the key can be anything. Take, let, let's say B. And that is pointing to something else. And this has our data. We'll just say it's like a 2D array, which is going to be a 2D array. And this has like 1, 2, 0, 3, P, X, whatever. And then you can have several others. So this is C. And that's pointing to something else some other data. So what we're going to do is give it our text, which our text is going to this really long thing. And from that text, we're going to have this whole structure in the background. They're going to use to, um, to display the text exactly how we want it on screen. And for our purposes is going to be, oops, text. So text is going to be our key. And then inside of text, we're going to have a paragraph. Again, just going to par. And the paragraph is going to have a list of lines. <laughs> so this is what the paragraph has. And each line is like a sentence, basically. So that's the uh, is, then space is, uh, stuff like that. And each one is like that. So we want it this way so that we can say, hey, take this sentence right here. And then over here, just draw it. And then go to the next sentence. And then draw, draw the next sentence a little bit below it. So basically, we're organizing all our data in a way that's very easy to for us to draw. But that organization that we're doing is a hard part at the beginning. We're also going to say, um, what is their current paragraph? Because we're going to have several paragraphs. There's another paragraph over here. Because this is just one piece of code inside of text. Paragraph zero, and this is paragraph one, and then each paragraph have its own lines. So we'll say, okay, we're in paragraph zero, we're in line two, or well, this is line one technically, line one, and we're in character whatever this is, twenty twenty, and we're gonna give it the our code these numbers and say, hey, draw draw this from this text object. So it'll say, okay, I'm gonna go to paragraph zero. Uh, we're on line one, so we're going to draw everything here, everything here, and then I'm going to draw everything to one, up to character 20. So I say, uh, wake up in the morning, and then one more, and then it'll do a partial line. And there's several reasons I want to do this. One of the reasons is that usually visual novels don't just plop the text in there. It has a little animation. So this is, I wake up, it's like... Each one is appearing at the, at the same time. So we're kind of planning for that beforehand. And um, if we plan on that, on structuring our data this way, we can very easily do it instead of just um, making it spit out everything at one time. We're kind of planning ahead for when we're actually doing the VN and we'll have a little uh, animation. So this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to do this structure right here. Ooh. Not paint. Data structures are bay. Data structures are your basic, your bread and butter. 
you, you kind of really have to understand them. Uh huh. Anyways. Yeah. Woot, he said the thing. Hash map is like a dictionary. <laughs> I've never heard it explained any other way. Data structures are bay. Yeah, I think that's how it was always explained to me. Because in a dictionary, you're like, well, I want word potato. So you go look up potato. And the word potato has a description in it. And the description is our data. Potato is our key. Anyway. I have a cat. You have a cat. <gasps> the reason I was explaining the hash map is we're saying <clears throat> if oh, I need to create the map up here. Mm -hmm. Our text map. This is our object that contains all seeing all powerful object. Let's equal to a new map. And map is a predefined JavaScript um, prototype that we can just use. So, if the text map, text map, um, has text, has, and then is the text that we get passed in. So we're the the um, I want to call it bang. One of my professors called it bang, but it's an exclamation point basically. Exclamation point means negation. So what we're saying is, does our oh, it's text margin, it's text map. Does our text map have the text? That's basically what we're saying. And we're saying if it doesn't have the the map, if it doesn't have the text rather. We're gonna say, hey, let text object just to call it something. And then go to a new object. I actually don't think I have to do this. I think in JavaScript I can just assign it, but that's you how the example has it. So, or my pro old program works. So <laughs> I'm doing the old program way. <gasps> have a good night, Neko. Oh, see ya, Neko. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully, you're good. I need to take note on commenting more. Dumping all with no context is horrendous later. And bang, that's the bash scripting term, I think. <laughs> yeah, it is. One of the professors was like super old stuff. He he did like uh, he explained to us the HTTP protocol, how it came to be. Mm. <laughs> it, it was it was really interesting but very useless <laughs> anyway now the chat is finally unmoderated <laughs> oh my god except i'm the moderator i don't know caveman is the the mod i mean i suppose but i am too I got cat hair all over my face. <laughs> and this is the end the positions I was talking about before. We're we're calling it. And I'm here too. Yeah, Tamer's here. Oh yeah, hey Tamer. Pick that. <laughs> there. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, okay, man. We have like 20 mods. I can't help it. I get mod happy. Yeah, this is all Alice's fault. So I'm just uh, typing up some stuff first, and then I'll explain what I'm typing up because this gets complicated. Max text. Max text width. Okay. Ah. 
I wonder if I can take this off. Can I? No. It's really nice when it's bigger screen, but when it's little screen, it keeps messing me up. Okay. So basically, I'm creating a new text object, which is going to store all our data. And then to their text map, which is our hash map, like our dictionary, we're saying, hey, um, this is the key, which is our text, and we're giving it the text object. So we're assigning that object. So in this object, we're creating some new variables inside of it, which are our indices or our positions inside of the text. So paragraph zero, line zero, and character zero. So this is basically putting us at the very beginning of the paragraph. And then to our text object, we're, we're assigning this other one, other variable called paragraph. And we're going to call this function that doesn't exist it yet. It's called gener generate paragraphs. And from there, we're going to actually create our data. So we're passing the text that we're going to split up, the context where, because we need it later, uh, the maximum number of lines because um, we already calculated, and the maximum width of our text. So we need these two to calculate how how we're going to split up our text. Okay. So <clears throat> we're organizing this a little more. Okay. And then to generate a paragraph. Oh, uh, I just copy pasting this. I had the stream open on another tab and I was wondering what I was hearing. <laughs> Hello, Eminent. Hey, Eminent. You are hearing Vintergatum and my rambling on. About coding. About stuff. coding stuff. Why is CTX? I didn't understand a single word you just said. <laughs> I, I got lost a really long time ago, but that's that's me. That's not his teaching. Now, there's some A plus explanations. I'll have to rewatch to see everything I missed. I hope it's not too complicated. I don't know why CTX is. Uh, uh, oh, I know what's going on. I didn't put a function in front of it. And then this is our function that we're calling. What sucks about this is it's all data, so we can't see anything happening in the screen yet. Mm. The way you do it is you you debug it on the console so you see something. So you say, hey, but um, something happens and, and it spits out a log saying, hey, this happened. But it kind of sucks that you can't see anything. It's a big thing about programming. A lot of it is kind of not tangible, and that that puts off a lot of people. But you just kind of have to have everything in your head. I'm just here to see the process. Yeah, Tamer, that's what I kind of I expected. I don't expect this to be like a class or anything. I'm just showing you guys more or less what it, the process of creating something or programming something. And if you're interested enough, you can rewatch the video and see how it is. Or download the code and play with it yourself. I can't understand English code anyway. All code is the same. Only the comments and variables are different. I once... So I, I applied to this uh, Japanese game company once. Um, part of the application process was to write uh, or modify this piece of code that they had and um, everything was in Japanese <laughs> so here I call it max line it was whatever Japanese kanji it, it, that was interesting and the comments were like this big block of Japanese <laughs> it's like oh great however I mean coding is coding so you just say hey this is a variable and it's getting passed into this so it must be doing something so you just kind of infer what's going on so I was able to do that uh, um, program that they wanted just fine. Although I didn't get the job at, at the end, probably because I can't speak Japanese. <laughs> and everyone was speaking Japanese. I mean, that would be <laughs> understandable. Yeah. I don't resent them or anything. 
Uh, to be fair, engines make it a little more tangible. Using run py is like writing a script. Can't imagine writing a VN from scratch. Haha. <laughs> That's what we're doing. It's not too bad. I I knew Leon. <laughs> uh, it might be a class, but I'm learning a lot. There's something good to construction. Um, I hope so. If we continue, if we do these trains more, I'll use a lot better code practices. You can make shovelware and stream coded. Ooh, marble machine. I love this song. Hi, babe. Love your design. Hey, doobie. Doobie? Dubai? And yeah, marble machine. Venture Gotham is great. Link in the description. It's free. He's alright. Copyright free. I'm more familiar with Ren PY. By the end, I want to make this to be something like that. So all you're, you'll have to provide is the script and some parameters in there, and it'll just go through it. Okay. Intermission. For intermission. Me What's the intermission for? We we had it. Oh. Because <laughs> uh, uh, we were talking to chat. To everyone. Okay. Tech splits. So there's this thing in most programming languages you can do with a string or a. You call it a string. So a string is just basically a sentence, a, a, a string of characters. Okay. It's a very common structure between many programming languages. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is slit, split. So what I'll do is take the sentence right here, and you say, "Hey, split it by the sent by the spaces." So it'll give me a list of all the different words. So I wake up one morning to my alarm clocks, and it it splits it at, at every space basically. So we get a big list of every single word in the sentence. So that's what we're doing. Give me, give me a big list of all the words in the, in the thing, in the sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Now, to that, we're gonna say let line text is equal to. So what we're doing is creating the first line. You destroyed their code so bad, they never wanted you to come near Japan, let alone work there. <laughs> and then, local man ruins Japanese coding. I'll be looking forward to watching the two of you more in the future. We look forward to seeing you there. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Normally I'm more vocal, but... You're still here. kind of lost. I, I didn't expect you to <laughs> be following too much. So what we're saying is, um, give me the first word of the splits. So in programming, zero means one is the, the very first one. I don't know why. I do know why, but usually you start with zero. Okay. So then we're going to create a new, we're creating the paragraph nice. It's equal to new array. And arrays are also very common. Array is basically a list of some things. In this case, it's going to be a list of lines. Okay. Then let current line index. It is doobie. No. Okay. Array does Dubai. All right, doobie. I'll try to remember it. They will stream forever after they buy some more ads. Maybe we'll buy some more ads. We'll see. I, I only want to get more ads if you can come up with some stupid funny ones. Sure, this is more fun when the alcohol kicks in. <laughs> oh, a drunk coding stream. That'd be amazing. No, it wouldn't. It would just be 
Get like, your speed, you going la 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 It's technical stuff, and then, ah oh, shit, it's broken, I have to fix it. And then I can't fix it because I'm drunk. Or, or, what if, it's uh -huh. amazing code at the first try because I'm not nervous and I code everything perfectly the first time. Oh yeah. No, that never happens. Even when you're like super good. <laughs> that never happens. What is a Wojak? <laughs> Add some Wojaks in your ad. Um, Alice does not know what a Wojak is. It's a meme. It's a dumb okay. meme. So basically, I'm creating the the data structures that we talked about before. Yes. So here we have a paragraph array. Oh, well. Uh, uh, uh. Since we're here, ah. where's me? Huh? There. I'll put it right here. So here, the paragraph array is basically this, all these structures right here. So each one of these is a, a an element in the array. Um, the paragraph itself is this one right here. So it's all, it's this list of lines. And then the line text is basically this line. So you can see that um, we're, we're creating every single part of the structure. Oh, bye, Pete. Now I gotta go look up what a Wojak is. <laughs> <gasps> oh, it's that thingy! I don't know. Bye. Wait, how does Alice not know what a Wojak is? Alice is very internet sheltered, to call it something. She, okay, she's more like into Facebook. I mean, even see within Facebook. Oh, I didn't know what they Shit. were called. <laughs> like I've seen it before, but I didn't That's know what it was. That's a map. Um, yeah, it kind of is a map. How do you learn to program? Uh, I went to school for it. It's dumb faces to make of people you don't like in its own epic style. Out of touch. Alice is weird. She's Oof. she's kind of sheltered. What are you talking about? I'm not weird. Sheltered life. Please understand. Leave the internet. <laughs> Your internet card has been recalled, Alice. Why? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna... I don't know if you guys have heard of a for loop. However, I'm create. I'm writing one. And then uh, I'll explain it once I, I've done it. So a for loop is basically a way to loop through your text. To your text, through your stuff. So you say... Hey, give me this counter. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's... It's I. And then loop through this till this condition is true. So basically it's saying I is less than length. Uh, text splits the length. <laughs> so we're looping through each one of our split, it, split, split words. So we're going through the whole sentence. And then when you're done with one loop, increment our counter by one. So in this case, we're saying, hey, start the second one because we already made the line one. So stack splits at zero is already inside of our line. So start the second one and loop through each one of the words. So while we look through each one of the words, here's what we're going to try to do. That next word. So we're saying, what's the next word? So it's text words splits, then sub i because it's our counter right and we just get the next word from our big list of words and then we're doing something interesting here we're creating some temporary text by taking the current line text which should have our first word right the first first time mm -hmm. and then we're adding a space in between it and then we're saying add the next word to it so this temporary text 
we'll have our current line, our current sentence plus the next word. And what we're doing to that is we're going to say, hey, make this measure object. And then with the context, we can do this measure text thing where it, and then we're going to give it the temporary text. Temp measure temp. Oh, I named it text text. Temp text. You studied programming so that you could one day make your own visual novel, right? Um, sorta. <laughs> That's the whole reason I went into it. I want to make video games at some point. And I've made a few little things here and there. Oh, I don't think we said hi, Nicholas. Hello, Nicholas. Thanks for stopping Hello. by. <laughs> Alice is so stone while he explains. <laughs> this is this is the hardest part of the program. So if you can get through this, the rest is easier. <laughs> yeah, I only did a little bit of HTML and CSS shit. And hold on to your butts. This is where it gets complicated. Test measure that width is more than max text width. This is the whole crux of this. So over here in our thing, what we're trying to do is say we're adding words to our sentence that we're going to put in the first object in our first line. So we're at this one and this one and this one, and we keep adding them until we get to clock. So we're at clock and we add, we're trying to add annoying, but annoying is not going to fit because it's annoying. <laughs> so what this code is doing is we create a temporary text where we add annoying to it and we measure it. So we measure this whole thing and we say, if this whole world is whole uh, sentence is bigger than the maxim maximum allowed value here, where our text is going to be, then that's the end of our line. Create a new line and add the the next word there. The problem is that what if we're at the end of our paragraph? Then we have to not only create a new paragraph, but we have to create a new paragraph, a new line, and start start it there. So th this is the the whole. This is the heart of our visual novel. We ha we want to make it so that we can fit our text in here without it looking all weird. What some visual novels will do is do it by character, but that looks weird because it starts writing annoying here and then it gets to the G and it's like, oh shit, it doesn't fit. Let me put annoying over here now. And that also always looked really wonky to me. So what we're doing is measuring it by word. And once we have all the words figured out, we can say, oh, well, don't even start writing annoying here, write annoying over here. How are you measuring the available space for characters? Are you using the mono space quality of characters? No, uh, that's uh, some magic that uh, um, Canvas has. Canvas has this measure text uh, uh, function, this measure text function. So this measure text function gives you a very precise measure of what your text, what, whatever text you give it within the context that you give it. So our context already has our font and our width and how big it is going to be and everything. So when we say, hey, make this, uh, give us the measure within this context, it tells us, oh, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, 700 pixels wide. And our maxed, um, max text width, we previously calculated it by saying, hey, how, how big is the canvas? And then we subtract this little bit and this little bit here. So we have this known max width. So with all of these um, known variables, we can say, hey, clock is the last one that fits in here. Start annoying over here. Oof, I asked too soon. <laughs> I'd go lazy and start the next sentence in the new frame. I'll be right back. OK. The problem is that you need to figure out what the sentence is. Um, I want to make it 
very easy to write because what we can do what we could do the e the laziest way to do it is instead of making the program do all this you just say hey let's make several sentences and measure them and then put them each time but that is super time consuming when you're creating the visual novel so you can say hey i wake up every morning clock alarm clock and then you say okay the next sentence is this you, you put it in another um variable or whatever and then the program will well it'll do it just how you want it right however say you change the font size then it doesn't work anymore or say and also whoever is writing the script has to take into consideration each each sentence so we want uh, a program that's smart enough that can take all uh, uh, take a sentence and then fit it into our our box however we want and whoever's writing stuff doesn't have to worry about anything they just write their sentence write their paragraphs write their story and the program will take care of it <laughs> changes the font size of a <laughs> 20,000 board vn oof and um it's things like these that a lot of people don't consider when they're creating video games and stuff and these there's little details is what makes uh, a video game a lot better to me when you can just hey i'm gonna resize it or whatever and it'll do it so we're trying to take at least a little bit into consideration uh, we're making a little bit smart we could make it super smart uh, but we're we'll be here all day <laughs> so for now we're just trying to make it a little smart and figure out where stuff goes so here here is the the function or the little piece of code that is the secret to all that you measure the width and then you you measure it against the max width and that's where the magic starts so if it is bigger we want another if here so if the current line index max lines minus one so here we're saying okay we went over what do we do now the next thing we have to say is hey are we going past the maximum amount of lines that we get so are we down here and is annoying going to go over not only the line but the over the paragraph so if we're going over the paragraph we have to create a new paragraph and a new line so i'm just going to copy this comment we had before so we're making a new paragraph and a new line so we say paragraph array which is where we're storing our all our uh, paragraphs and then pa index is our current count of our uh, paragraphs so at the beginning is zero and then this plus plus is saying hey after you get it incremented by one this is the plus plus the famous plus plus and c plus plus so it's c plus plus it's kind of a play on words is saying hey it's the c programming language plus one so it's like c2 or whatever but uh that, that's the plus plus so we're saying okay save our current paragraph so we're saving our current paragraph paragraph and then after we save the paragraph, we're going to make paragraph the same uh, variable, but it's going to be a new paragraph. Max lines, I guess. If C is good, then why isn't there a C2 minus C plus bloat? At least that's some would say. It really depends on what you're doing. Normal C is really good for assembly and anything like chips and low level. C++ is really needed if you're making something a lot more complicated. There's a lot of different levels. They call it uh, stacks, stack uh, elements. 
So it's very easy to just say, hey, I'm going to write for a chip and just one chip. But when you're writing stuff for like JavaScript, for example, JavaScript is one of like 20 different stacked things in the <laughs> that goes to your processor. So your processor only understands assembly. But that assembly gets... You can write assembly, or you can write assembly, but you don't write assembly because of the pain in the butt. So what you gotta do is write C. And that C is like your... <laughs> I'm getting way too into it. <laughs> Let, let's just say that JavaScript is at the very top of this huge hierarchy of technologies. And when you're actually running, say, hey, new, new array, you're running, <laughs> I don't know, 20 years worth of code. <laughs> We'll just, we'll just leave it at that and continue, or else we'll be here forever. <laughs> this, is not a, this is not a lecture on the history of computing. Hey, Alice is back. Hi. That was a lot of uh, gibberish talk. Yeah, it is. I tend to gibberish. When, when, uh, when I talk about something, I, like, I, I tend to go for... on for a while. It's okay. I, I still think it's funny. And here, we're doing similar thing as up here. So up here, we're saving our paragraph into our, our paragraph array, creating a new paragraph. And then here, we're saving our current line into our new paragraph. And... We're creating a... Uh, a new line with the next word. <laughs> oh, plus. Eep. There was no eep. There Nobody was. heard anything. And then, <clears throat> if we only create a new line, we don't need to create a new paragraph, so we just create a new line. Which should be the same as this. Oh no, the current line should be plus plus, I think. There. So this code just creates the new line and increases our new line counter bone. So we save our new line to the current paragraph, the current index in the paragraph, and then we create a new line with the next word. So the next word should be in the next line. And we'll start adding it to that line. I think it's fascinating. I love tangents about topics I'm not familiar with, like coding. <laughs> hey, Arthur. Thanks for Hello. stopping by. I'm glad you like it. I tend to go on tangents if I know even a little bit about the, about the subject. My hearing is why I have a hard time. So uh, th this only happens, we only have to create a new line or a new paragraph if the current line is more or if the current measure is more than the the width however if it's all peaches and dandies if that makes sense <laughs> that's not right <laughs> we just add a space and add the next word and that should be it for our, our organizing of data we measure the text. If the text is too big, we create. We check if we have to create a new paragraph. If we don't, we create a new line. If we do, we create a new paragraph and a new line. But if it's not too big, we just add it to the line and uh, just keep adding it until you do have to do the rest. Mm. And at the very end, um, I think because I program it kind of wonky. Sorry. No, it's fine. We have to say paragraph, current line. You kind of save it at the end. There's probably a better way to do this, but I didn't have time to go back and uh, clean up my code. But and at the very end, we're, we're, we're saving it. We're saving the current line of the current paragraph to its uh, 
its part in the object. PA index. Paragraph. Just paragraph. So we save the current line and we save the current paragraph into its, each one of the zones. Mm -hmm. And then here we're returning um, the paragraph array that we just created, which is the structure that we talked about before. This is all to create the paragraph array, which has paragraphs inside of it, and each paragraph has lines inside of it, and each line is a string of characters inside of it. And there you go. This is the heart of our program. Okay. So. That was the hard part. The rest shouldn't be too bad. I hope so. <laughs> so, uh, generate program, and then we, we call create object if needed. Uh, create object if needed. Uh-oh. Hold on. I might have messed up something. It's <laughs> kindergarten programming. Max lines. Hmm? Oh, okay. Max lines. There you go. That's why it wasn't being used. That would have been a, an error later on. Oh. Because you didn't have the S. Yeah, okay. that's another thing JavaScript does. You say, eh, whatever. It doesn't really check for it. <laughs> it kind of does. VS Code does. But JavaScript doesn't care. It just says, oh, you're giving me a new object. Oh, let's do it. I'll try it. Oh, man. I might take a very quick break. I gotta pee again. <laughs> Be right back. Oh no. Entertain the malice. Oh no. <laughs> it's not kindergarten program. Um. Um. The only news I have will get repeated at the end of the day. And that's that tonight's stream has been bumped an hour. Probably. Because Leon wants to watch some competition. So good stuff going on there. Mm. But other than that, my day is very uneventful. I'm doodling. You got mad at me for playing Minecraft, so I quit. I heard him laughing somewhere in the distance. Okay, I didn't quit because he got mad at me. Let me let me correct that. I quit because there was server lag and I wasn't able to mine any blocks. And I was like, screw this, I'm done then. <sighs> it was manacle laughter. It's always manacle laughter. <laughs> it sounded a little manacle. It's always manacle. Is it always medical? <laughs> always. Uh, sounds like a cope. Wait, I'm a little too. There you go. You did a very loud pop. <clears throat> the light inside is broken, but she <laughs> still works. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm breaking your light, Alice. All coding does this to me. It's okay. It's nothing personal. Ouch. So we were at draw text. Jeez. Ah, I'm trying to figure out where we are. Okay. We're at draw text. So all of that was to be able to draw the text in a little better way. <laughs> so, so far, we create the, created the object that we wanted. Mm -hmm. 
And then what we're going to do is, once we create the object, we're going to get that object back. Because right now, we just saved it up there. So what we want to do is uh, text map. Yeah. Now that I'm writing this code again, I'm seeing a whole bunch of things that I could do to make it better. That's good, right? Yeah, but I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> what a scrub. <clears throat> Unless we keep working on it. Who knows? Uh, so we get the object back. The object that we just created, a beautiful object that contains everything in it. And then um, we're gonna get the first paragraph from uh, from that object. Mm -hmm. Text mm -hmm. object. That paragraphs. It's just the coding experience. Which part? Being broken or finding things to fix? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I've written some projects from scratch like six times because I always saw room for further organization. That is actually the best way to do it. The, the way you do it is you code it once, you look at it, it's crap. And you learn from your past mistakes. You code it again. It's less crap. <laughs> and you keep doing it until it's pretty good. I wake up to my alarm clock's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is what it says. That is what it says. <laughs> Don't worry. Soon it'll say more. Oh, no. Create object if needed. Text object para 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 index para index. Usually copy. Then. Hello, Sonic. I don't know if we've said hi to you. Oh, hey, Sonic. Thanks for stopping by. So we're gonna we're gonna draw all the lines that are whole first. So we're gonna make another four. Or loop that we talked about before. Zero. And then i is less than. Text object the line index. I plus plus. And line index is basically saying what is our last line. So if the line index is three, right? It'll draw one, two, and not three. Because three, we want, we want a special function for that. So I'll draw line one and two. And then instead of calling it like this, we'll create another function real quick. This, this uh, draw text line. So it's a lot easier to call a function here than to do this multiple times because we're doing it. We're, we're calling this fill text a couple times. So we'll just create a function and the function will take care of a lot of things for us. So we want the text. We want the context to draw it CTX. Game center CTX. Line index. We want the canvas height. And we want the text line height, which we calculated earlier. And then I'm going to copy this. Put it here. Because it's close. I can't unhear this song. I know. This is a song from uh, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> and good oh my god, I've heard it so many times. Good night, caveman. Have a good night. Good night, caveman. Thanks for stopping by. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, this compass that height, but we actually gave it the canvas height. 
So these calculations can be done in here, so we don't have to do them up here. So canvas height my, minus margin bottom minus text area height. That makes sense. Plus text line. Ah, here what we gotta do is um. So we're dang it. What happened? Now where were we? Are you breaking shit again? <laughs> no, it it, it scrolled. I, yeah, like I pu push something and it scrolls. Because it's so small, I keep pressing buttons. Oh, here we were. Usually, how we did this is that we added the height of the text to it. But since we're doing multiple lines, we gotta add the height multiple times. So if we're in line 1, we add it once. If we are in line 2, we add the height and another height so it starts writing it over here. So we can't just add the text line height directly to it. We have to say um, <clears throat> line index because that's what we're currently on. Plus one. Plus one. The plus one is because um, what do you call it? It starts at zero. So we want it to at least be one. Okay. Program, work with me. No. And then to that, we're going to multiply it by text line height. So the zeroth line will be one, and it'll be multiplied by that. The sec, the first line will be the, well, the second line will be one, and it'll be text line height times two. So it's like one to less than two. So it's the zero. The, the one and two so that that'll put it in the y the correct y position hopefully <laughs> yeah the problem is that because we wrote so much stuff and we haven't tested it yet mm -hmm. that it's gonna break for sure oh. <coughs> excuse me and once it breaks we'll fix it so now that we have draw text we can just call draw text here. Or draw line text. Draw text line. And we'll pass it in. Paragraph. No. Paragraph. So by the CTX. Our context to actually draw. Canvas height. And text line height, text line height, text line height. So <clears throat> we're giving it the height of our text, the actual height of the canvas, the context, and the current line that we have. So Paragraph and then brackets I basically saying in this paragraph give me your ith element. So if it's the zeroth element it gets the first element, which is a sentence. So we're looping through each sentence and writing it. So this is to draw everything before in the current line. If we want to draw the current line, which is a little different because we're going to be drawing a partial text. Then partial text. We will create that partial text. In a similar way that here we're getting this, we're going to get, but instead of I, it's the current um, index, I suppose. So the text object has the current index. Line index. So it basically gets the last line we're going to draw. To that last line we're going to draw, there's this thing called the substring. And the substring gives you a partial string. 
officially lost. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll I'll, uh, I'll show it right now. We're almost done. We're basically drawing the last line. The last line, we want a partial partial line. And the uh, text object contains this car index. Plus one. The plus one is because it starts at the zero. There you go. So we have the partial text, so we call this thing again. Ah, I'm just gonna copy paste it. So what we do is we draw the, the last line, which is the parcel text. We pass in the context, which is the thing that draws it. Uh, we get the line index from it, which is which the number of the line. So we're saying, hey, draw the third line. And the third line is the last line. We're giving it the canvas height right here and the text line height. So how much that measures. So, in theory, this should write. However, um, you may or may not remember that we gave it zeros for where, which, where we are. So, if we give a line, we're just going to give it random numbers here. So, it, it writes a couple lines. There. And hopefully... Okay, something breaks, but text object not defined. Oh, I wrote it wrong. Line 86, instead of text object is, ah, I wrote it wrong over here. How is that different? Alice, can you help me? Huh? Text object text o object I i'm missing yeah. a b nah nah you were missing it in a lot of things yeah it was <laughs> object Hopefully those are the only places I'm missing it. I might be missing it in other places. Uh, substring of undefined. Is the text object? We have the text object. Line index? Line index is right. Oh, actually, since we're here, we can actually check if our data breaking up worked. Object, yeah. You should look at Yandere simulation code. Else if else if, yeah. He gives a lot of flack for that, but I mean, there's better ways to do it. It's not horrible. I mean, it is horrible, but it's not as horrible as you think. But there are much better ways to do it. I think Yandiradev's problem is his attitude more than anything. If you're willing to learn and to adapt, you have a much better time with everything. I. Huh? I'm going to look at our paragraph object real quick. Mm -hmm. Paragraph, paragraphs, text object of paragraphs. Oh, our paragraphs is not working because um, it only has an I in there. You can kind of sort of see it in there if you're watching full screen. <laughs> but our paragraph only has an I in there, so it's not actually splitting, in the, splitting them up correctly. So we'll try to fix that. So I put a breakpoint where it, it's actually splitting it. Yandiv is the mascot of our Barco. 
bad code at this point. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, there, there was... Tried to program a game. Ended up with an AI. <laughs> he ended up with something, alright. So our max length is 4. Our max width is 780. And then... Okay. That looks fine. Text split of that. So we get us text splits. So we can see that we have a list of all the different words we talked about earlier. Then we create a new line. It's I. And then we are creating a new paragraph and creating the paragraph array. So here saying, hey, is I okay? Is I less than this? Text splits it how is that undefined? What? Length. Ah, oh, I'm missing a G. <clears throat> 126. Length. Length. For want of a G, we lost the horse. So now the length is 50. Okay. All right. Let's hope it actually works. Now, what's the error gives us now? <laughs> Yandere Dev's real problem is that he has no clue about memory management or complex data structures. To be honest, the idea isn't bad, but he built the tech depth and build up tech depth and will have to do a full refactor in order to continue. Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest problem. For example, this code has a lot of tech depth, they call it. So there's a lot of little bits that you can fix to make it more expandable and easier to do. And if we were to continue, I'd probably go through this code and uh, put it in its own things and put just a little bit in main. It's like putting everything in one file. And that really sucks. He doesn't want to do it because no one wants to do that. Gaming Pungus have collapsed for the same reason. Yep, pretty much. And don't don't get me started and get in companies and management and stuff. Get them started. Because the the reason big companies, big software companies are fucked up, are, are many and varied. But a good reason is management ones. Hey, do your code faster. But if you want to get rid of tech depth and make your code better for a long time you're not gonna be creating something new you're gonna be fixing something old and when manager and sees hey you're not doing anything nothing new is being created they think oh you're slacking off and it's really hard to explain to someone who doesn't normally program no I'm just making it better see it's just better structured Mm -hmm. I'm putting it in, in good in uh, good folders and good names and stuff like that, of which course. will make it a lot easier to understand. But some random manager that never touched code in their life, they're just lacking out. So your only option is to continue adding to the crappy code. And you continue putting more crappy code into your code. And you end up with this monstrosity that's un like no one understands and you bring in more people. And the new people have to learn the program and it's really hard for the new people to do anything new. And it's it just spirals out of control. So uh, the solution to that is uh, good practices and um, good uh, software development cycles. But that's a topic for another day. <laughs> the Microsoft conundrum. Windows NT is still buried in Windows 10. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Oof. I forgot why are we looking at. Uncut reference. Canvas height is not defined. 87. If we look at 87. Canvas height. Canvas. Huh. Did I misspell canvas height? Alice, help me. 
Do you see this? Canvas? You did spell it wrong. Hate. That one's right, that one's not. The one that's highlighted is. Is right? Yes. And this one? That one's not. Canvas. H E I. You put hate instead of height. The T and H are switched. Oh, goddamn. You see, since I'm somewhat dyslexic. I couldn't see the difference between those. <laughs> so it happened a few times. Oh my god, I'm dying. So this is the correct one. Yes. H. Yes, height. It ends in height. Yes. Motherfucker. <laughs> so you have a few that are yeah. incorrect. So if I double click, it highlights everything. Well, I'm going to try something. Hopefully it works. If I press F2, I can rename everything uh, the same one. So... I think. I think is right now. Oh, wait, the music went away. I guess I'll remove attention to detail from my resume. <laughs> so, when you're the one actually doing it, or if you're actually paying attention really well right now, you probably won't notice it because you've been looking at it for so long. Whereas I was not paying attention. They say the fish is the last one to notice that he's in the sea or something like that. So I happened to just look up and because I haven't been paying attention, I could tell it was spelled different. Have you guys heard of the Three Mile Island disaster? No. <laughs> the Three Mile Island is a nuclear reactor in Three Mile Island, I think New York. Um, their problem was that they had something go wrong in the nuclear process and they ha they it almost I think it did melt down and melted down just a little bit the, and they had teams of engineers a bunch of different people and they were trying to figure out what was going on they couldn't figure out why alarms were blaring everywhere and they just couldn't figure out how to fix it um, what it turns out that there was this one sensor that was placed somewhere really weirdly weirdly like uh this and it was like flashing for example it was flashing it was this light bulb that's flashing and all the engineers that have years of experience in nuclear energy and years of experience with this uh big piece of complicated equipment did not notice this one little flashing light bulb hidden in in a weird spot it took some random dude that really doesn't know anything about it to come in and say, hey, what the hell is that? That's blinking. Is, is that is that after something <laughs> rug? And when the engineer saw it, they said, ah, crap. We know exactly what it is. It's the alarm for a specific nuclear thing that's going on. And they were able to contain the nuclear meltdown <laughs> right away. But because they were so preoccupied with stuff that normally happens, they were checking the pressures and whatever else. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a nuclear engineer. But they were so focused on what they usually do that they didn't notice this one little thing that doesn't happen. So it's very common for that have to happen in an, at a professional level where you don't you lose the trees for the forest or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. I can understand that. That was it's a three mile island disaster. I don't know if it's true. My one of our professors told me that. Sorry, I just took it as face value. I'm gonna have to look it up to see if it's true. It's a good story, though. Yeah. <laughs> so attention to detail is actually pretty hard when you're in the weeds. I I try my best. Anyway, let's see if it worked. Only I can be perfect. <laughs> Only you can be perfect. Thank God, thank God for the random bad. Yeah. It would have been a horrible nuclear accident. Instead, it was a small, very... It was still a nuclear incident, but... In comparison. Yeah. Canvas height, 87. It's still not fixed. <laughs> Canvas... H-E-I-G-H-T. What is it called? There's here? another one that's spelled wrong. This one. This one is. These two are not. 
H E I G H T. Yeah. And then over here, H E I H T. Just to make sure. T H. Okay. No more results for that. Ah, we, we're getting something. So I think our third. Sleep, one... I wish I had a. Sorry. Yeah, sleep, I wish I had a. It looks like our third line is being written, but not our first or second line. So that makes it a lot easier for us to debug. So we know that it's this function right here, because this function right here handles every line before the last line. Quick find replace all. That is super dangerous to do. <laughs> Especially if we don't save it beforehand. So I'm going to put a breakpoint in, in 82. 82. And we'll see what's going on. Uh, uh, for text object like line index. Our line index is two. So, so draw line, paragraph I, which it should be drawing this one, right? And our canvas height is six hundred, and our text line has is that. Hmm. So we go into it, and our text is, I woke up one morning to my alarm clocks, and it should be filling it, huh? Interesting. <laughs> it's another one of those. It's not giving me any error, but it's not acting how we want it to. So we know our third line works, but not our first or second one. So I'm going to look at the text of the code real quick. I'm going to make sure we're passing in the right things like we weren't before. So we're passing in the line that we're trying to run, right? So partial text. And then we're passing in the context and we're passing in the canvas height. Wait a minute. What is this? Oh, I think we're missing something. Oh, there. So it requires a text. It requires the CTX. <laughs> it requires the line index. Oh, then we missed that. I'm looking at my... Ah. Yes, 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 yes. So our line index, or our... We didn't pass in the number that it is, so we have to pass in I. So I is telling us, oh, it's the first first part of the first uh, line, second line, third line. So we weren't giving it that. So everything was getting messed up. There you go. I wake one morning to my alarm clock and knowing ring, my head pounding from lack of sleep. I wish I had a. So now, if we play with these characters, like right, chart index, give it 50. So. I wish I had a few minutes, but I. So if I give it like five. <gasps> Everything breaks. Huh? Oh, it just hadn't loaded. So it'll write like a sleep. So if we give it a line index of zero, and then 50 here, it should only write the first um, line. Yeah, there you go. So our structure for th for our sentences works, and we don't get any weird things that happen here. And then if we do four, I don't know if we have four, but it, it might break. But we'll try it. Okay, I already hit the snooze on my alarm clock twice, and if so, you can see that annoying is not here, and it goes over here. And then sleep is not here; it goes over here. 
Oh, and here is the beauty of this. Let me just put two there, just in case it breaks. But here we have the our, our font. Say we want a bigger font because we can't read. Our code takes care of it. It doesn't. Uh, it um, it moves it around. And we want a smaller, smaller one because we want all the text. Boop. Our code takes care of it. And it doesn't do any weird hands in there. Suddenly, do yeah. To be honest, I'm really liking this engine. Seems a little snappier than what some companies use. <laughs> the reason it's snappier is because it's like <laughs> very little things on it. If we start putting more stuff on it, it will be very. It'll, it will start chugging a little more. However, we don't really want like we want something to like advance through it like a real visual novel, right? So what we'll do is put some input into it. And if and we'll say, hey, every time you press Z, write a letter. So you advance, advance it. And it's not looking like a real visual novel. Well, snappier is a bad word. Cleaner. Eventually, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll put more stuff into it. If there's enough interest, we'll, we'll put more stuff into it and make it more interesting. Maybe, maybe like animations and make it, uh, say, Leon looks this way and goes that way or something. I don't know. Wait, does that mean I have to do more work? If we continue it, yeah. Oh my god. This is god. kind of a trial run of a oh stream. Oh my god. So I want to do one more thing. I want to make it so that we don't have to go in here and mess with the variables to to do our thing. I want us I want it um I want us to press buttons and for the visual novel to do stuff. So to do that, we will be creating um, a keybind. Uh, it's basically keybinding. Okay. So, if we remember, right now we're calling draw directly. So, instead of calling draw directly, we want to. Let me organize my thoughts real quick. Okay. Instead of uh, calling draw directly, we want to set the key binds here. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay. So, so let's explain a little bit how key binds work. When you in JavaScript, you can say, "Hey, give me the events that happen in the keyboard." So, you can say, "Hey, give me the event on, on the Z character." When you press Z, it, it triggers an event, and that event happens. However, we don't want that event to happen before we load stuff. So we're only going to trigger those events or set up those events after we load both images. Because if we try to do the event before we have the images, it won't work. So instead of drawing, we're going to do uh, a new function that we haven't written yet called set key. key binds just to call it something and then once we have set key binds and we talked about callback callback functions before in a similar way to this so when you press that button it'll call a function this is basically what we're going to do and we're going to do it at the end whoops i apologize i do that too well mine was a paper hitting the microphone <laughs> Can ghost him next time you go to the bathroom. Sneeze? It's a sneeze if you hear it. Choo! Choo! If you don't hear that choo, it's not a sneeze. Er. Hmm? Yeah, sneeze. I'm getting myself confused. So this is very JavaScript specific. We 
we're basically saying to our HTML window, add an event listener. The event listener is a key down event listener, is a specific type of event listener because you can listen for all sorts of things. You can miss it, listen for a mouse click or you can miss it, listen for a refresh or whatever. But in this case, we want a key down event listener. And when that event listener happens, um, you call this function. And this function that you're going to call says if the event that we just got is default prevented. Um, this is basically JavaScript uh, stuff. So <laughs> it's to avoid duplicate, duplicate events. So if you leave it hold down or you, you get like two different keys or something, it, it's basically avoid do nothing. Basically, you do nothing. JavaScript is JavaScript stuff. We probably don't don't even need it, but that's what uh, the example said. So I'm using it just because. So anyway, from our event we get the code, and the code we do this thing called a switch. It's basically like a like an if. So ifs say, hey, this is true, do what's inside of it. And then sometimes you have an else. So if it's false, do do this, right? What switch does, it says, is this equal to whatever you give it? So in this case, you do case, you say key Z, and that's what the, the Z key is called in JavaScript. You, we call draw. So we draw the whole thing. So whenever we press Z, we re redraw the whole event of the whole window. And this is why we want to set the keybinds after we load everything, because we only want to draw after the images are loaded. And then we do this paragraph, paragraph, advanced thing. We haven't written this yet. But basically what we'll, what we'll do is we'll mess around with these numbers right here and figure out where in the paragraph we are with this one. This is what makes the game part of the VN. And then we put a breakpoint. Switch condition one, condition two, etc. case being a state. Yeah, basically. So our state is the key Z is down. Okay. Da, da, da. Oh, and part of the no repeat event. Is the event dot prevent default. It has to do with this thing up here. So basically we want to prevent uh, duplicate events. It has to do with JavaScript or something. Or something. Yeah, some, sometimes you just kind of do stuff. Like JavaScript is weird that way. It, JavaScript has a lot more weirdness than other programming languages, unfortunately. So some things you just say, oh, okay, you do it that way. And, and don't ask so many questions. <sighs> unfortunately, if you really want to know JavaScript, you have to ask those questions and then you learn why you do it that way. At this point, we don't care. It's out of the scope of this lecture, or whatever this is. <laughs> it's like in math. Sometimes you say, hey, just trust me at, at this this amount. It's like pi. You know, when you calculate the circumference of a circle, you just say, hey, pi is 3.14159 or whatever. However, that's not exactly what pi is. Pi is like some rational number that we created to you can actually calculate pi and you, you can know it's the ratio between this and that but you don't really need to know to calculate the circumference at that point you just 
Hey, it's pi. You just multiply it by pi. Okay. <laughs> Wouldn't be enough to exit. Um, yes, but I believe... Uh... I'm, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm like, he broke. He froze. <laughs> it might be enough to exit, but... This is how they had it. And I think we return true in the events listener. I'm not sure. You can play with the code. This is how I know it works. So, and this is all JavaScript funkiness. So I'm not going to mess with it too much. <laughs> anyway, this should set our key. So when we press Z, it draws and it does paragraph advance. Before we write this function, mm -hmm. I am actually not gonna do anything here. I'm just gonna make, make the function empty. We're gonna see if it works. So right now we haven't drawn anything. We press Z, it draws. And it draws the first paragraph, the first character of the first line of the first paragraph, I. So but when we want, what we want to do is go to the next character when we press Z. And we'll do that with this paragraph advance. So we'll draw and go to the next character. For the paragraph advance, it's basically all math, but the program does the math for us. So I'm going to put a bunch of variables in the screen. So we, first we want to get the text object is equal to the text map. And then we get the text. All right, we get the sample text. The sample text is up there. It's a global variable for now. Uh, we'll, we'll change that later, but for now, for our purposes, this works. And then we'll get the paragraph object from text object, done uh, paragraphs. Paragraphs. I actually have to type it out. Oh, not one paragraph. It's all of the paragraphs. And then we're getting our position in the code or a position in the paragraph itself. So para index is equal to text object. And para index. These are all um, values that we, or variables that we put into the text object previously. It's basically these three right here. In fact, uh, oh, there you go. I'm just going to do this. There's a way to like, uh, oops. This always wows people when I do this. When mm -hmm. I do the vertical selection. Yeah. Huh? It doesn't like me doing stuff. Oh, was that your computer? Yeah. I thought it was mine. I'm like, what did I break now? No, something. Input language switching. Dismiss. Because I was me messing around with stuff. I was just like, my first thought is, what did I break? Okay, so the paragraph index anything. is paragraph index. This will be a character in this. This will be line index. Okay. So we have the paragraphs. And we have the indices of where we are. So this will tell us exactly where we're at in the paragraph. Input language switching? Japanese. Japanese. Yeah, I, I, I think it did something. There's... I was doing stuff with shift and alt, and if it, you do shift and alt a couple times, it switches the language or something. I don't know. Ooh. Input language switching. 
line index paragraph. Okay, so we have the indices. So we're basically going through the the paragraph. So this char index plus one. So if we advance one, and that is bigger than the current paragraph. The current paragraphs current line dot length. So basically if the next character that we go into is bigger than the current line, then we go to the next line. Right? But we have the same problem as before. What if is the end of the paragraph? So we have to check for the end of the paragraph. So if the line index plus one because we're going to the next line index is more than the paragraph paragraphs Oops. this should be this up here I should probably name this a little easier to understand but whatever para index so if the if adding a new line makes it bigger than the current paragraph then we go to the paragraph so here, new paragraph. And a new paragraph means that uh, our text object oops, huh? why isn't it working? Ah, whatever. I'll do it manually. <clears throat> our new paragraph's character index. So we start at the beginning of the line. And we start at the beginning of the lines, of the list lines. But our current paragraph goes up by one. And then here is else. Um, if it's not a new paragraph, it's just a new line. Then our character Right, goes back to zero because it's a new line, and our line index just goes up by one. So we're basically adding one. We're basically counting at this point. If it's neither of those, we nothing new. We'll say so. Text object dot char index plus plus. So we just go to the next character. So with this, we should be able to step through the paragraph. Well, let's see if it works. Oh. oh, and now that we start capturing uh, keystrokes, it's actually capturing at five, so I can't refresh it. <clears throat> That's something we, we'd have to fix later. But if I press Z, I should load it. I press it again, nothing happens. You broke it. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, that's not right. <laughs> Paragraphs of paragraph index. It should be para index. I'm just double checking. Line index, length. Okay, I just made a typo there. Again, I need, I can't press that, but press Z. Okay, what's the problem now? Oh, there you go. I wake up on one morning, and if I leave it pressed, and it looks like a VN, doesn't it? That's fun. And here's the crucial part. We go to the next line. I go to the next paragraph. I'll be late for school. Here you go. Woo! -hoo. There you go. That's cool. A semi-working visual novel engine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing there? Tired. Yeah. Tired? Mentally tired? Mentally tired. Programming and explaining is exhausting. 
So well, you did a good job. This code can be found at uh, this good lab. I'm gonna put it right here. No, you just need a skip text feature, history feature, and flood feature. Yeah, actually, those are all features that I would try to implement if I continued. And the great thing about this way of organizing things is that you just set it, when you skip the text, you just set it to, hey, display everything, and it'll set everything there. Because we already have all the groundwork for everything, so it shouldn't be too bad to continue working on it. But you can go into the GitLab. Let me know if you can go in there. Wait. And you can see the code. And you can actually download the code and run it yourself. Wait, you guys are Isla Mouse? <laughs> we are from the moon. I don't know if that's considered alien or not. We're Lunarians. Isla Mouse. I have it open. <laughs> You found it. Isla Mao means alien. All I can think of is that base dude. Based? Lamao. L O L. Oh. Most epic base. <laughs> um, what's his name? Davy Fiber or something. He does say Lamao. L O L. But yeah, if you're interested at all, download the code. Uh, you just open index.html in in a browser, and you should be able to run it. Uh, I think most, it should be compatible with all browsers. I don't know about really old Internet Explorers, but if you have Chrome or Firefox or Opera, it should work. I just realized hmm? you're staring at Galco. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god, you're looking right at her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Galco deserves it. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and that's all I had planned for programming today. Yay! Good job. I mean, not yay, that, that was all you had planned. I, I get it. That you got through it. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of other things I'd like to add. Uh, I'd like to make it so that it actually advances on its own and you don't have to press Z. Lots of laughs. League of Legends. Ha. I've never heard it as lots of laughs. Pachi, 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 pachi. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> I hope um, you guys... Bafu, bafu. I hope it wasn't too... Um, what do you call it? Complicated? What would you call this, Alice? Uh, uh. <laughs> confusing? I hope it wasn't too confusing. For cold minded people? Mm -hmm. Even if not, it's not meant to be super complex, but there's some parts in there that are get complicated. Pachi Pachi, vocalite song, vocalite song name LOL. I don't think I've heard that one. Anyways. Anyway. You can download the code, you can play with it, you can add to it if you want. I think... You think? That you should slowly work on it, even if it's not on the stream. Mm -hmm. So that next Valentine's Day, we can have a dating sim. <laughs> that is actually my plan. But maybe for Halloween. Oh, that, that's not spooky though. I suppose. Or is it? Hey, good night, Blitzen. Uh, anything else? Nessa should look upon this code in the future and weep. Ha! <laughs> uh, if you like this sort of thing, uh, let us know. We do have a curious cat that you, I think Alice uh, linked earlier. I did earlier. Um, if you like this sort of thing. You can leave a comment in there, or you can even leave a comment in this video or something. Once it's done, I don't think you can comment while we're live. If you like it, I'll continue making it, make add more features, 
I like to go through the concept of a game loop, which is basically um, a game. It does the keystrokes for you and it, it reacts to what you do instead of us making it react. It reacts to it reacts automatically, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there's, there's several things we can do. We can add like a name. We can go to the next scene and stuff like that. If you're interested in that sort of thing. Oh, and everything that Sonicon said, basically the history and skip. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of things we can add. So if you're interested, let us know. We'll plan for the next one. Um, there was more I wanted to say, but I forgot. That means he's gonna put me to work to make more art. <gasps> Maybe. We'll see. It would be cool to make a, a visual novel. I want to include other VTubers in it, too. It would be fun. That would be funny. Oh, you know, we could also, since we know, since we know them, we can make them do voice clips of it stuff. Wouldn't oh that be my cool? god, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> so each one has its own voice clip? Ah, oh, that'd be great. That That's the dream. That would so, be hilarious. So here I, I'd be thinking, I woke up one morning to my alarm clock's annoying ring. My head's pounding from lack of sleep. I wish I had more, a few more minutes, but I already hit snooze on my alarm clock twice. If I don't get out of bed right now, I'll be late for school. And you can do an ara ara for them. <laughs> yeah. You can. I can. Yeah. Oh no, we're we're gonna record stuff. We're gonna record every VTuber girl and make an ara ara out of them. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. We'll have an ara ara gallery. Oh, that would be funny. And then it's like different types of ara ara. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, that would be <laughs> funny. Uh. But yeah, there's a lot of dumb things we could do with this thing. <clears throat> but we'll see in the future what happens. Ah. But today... Are you coding, son? Hey, Carmine, yeah. <laughs> well, he was coding. Well, he actually just finished coding. I'll show you the end result. This is uh, more or less what we did. So it kind of looks like visual novel. DDLC bad end where you get ear piercing Alice hiccups. <laughs> oh man, if we ever can record me while I actually have the hiccups, that'd be hilarious. Oh, her hiccups are like you guys louder. get lucky. It's just one, maybe two. The louder and more. Um, what was I gonna say? Are we um, postponing the stream for a little bit later? I did bump it to 8.30. If you want it even later, let me know. Okay. We're, we, we were going to have a scheduled stream at 7.30, .30. but we are actually delaying it a little bit. Because he wants to watch a battle. <laughs> because something's happening. <clears throat> I thought we were going to be in the middle, like we'd have time, but it's actually around the time that we stream, so. I didn't mind bumping it, because if I don't play that much tonight, I'm cool with that. And a certain uh, red-headed VTuber that just appeared is involved in that battle. Ooh, snap. <laughs> Which reminds me, I have to promote. Oh, there we go. What do you have to promote? No, I'm, it's nothing, nothing. Okay. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um... The next stream is going to be uh, the, an hour later. 8.30 p.m. Central. 8.30 Central. And if we're a little late, then the battle hasn't ended yet. <laughs> yeah, legendary. What's going on? Um, the stream is going to be a little late, Sonicon. And... Because... But why? Carmine is going to be having a Tekken battle. Which I want to see. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure on what channel it's going to be. Oh, yeah, it? where's it going to be at, Carmine? Is it going to be on yours? Both of yours? Who knows? We'll figure it out. 
Um, I can link it in the Don't Go in the Woods whenever it's posted. The Blur Witch one whenever uh, they go live or whatever. That way uh, oh, people okay. know where we are. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good idea. But I'm I... unsure. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Whenever I see that it's up, I'm going to just put it there so people can go and look if they want to. I think it will be Shimadas. Shimadas. Okay. Shimada Tiger. Carmine versus Shimada Tiger. The Don't event look. of the history. She's gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> I am rooting for Carmine. I'm on Team Phasmophobia. <laughs> anyway, was there any <laughs> other announcements? Uh, that was it. Okay. I want to thank everyone that chatted with us and that visited us. Tomboy ASMR. Although I guess that is kind of tempting. Either way, we win. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Hopefully it was interesting enough. Oh. And good luck, Carmine. Good luck, yes. And I hope to see you all next time. Mm -hmm. Say goodbye, Alice. See you all later. See you, everyone. Thanks for Bye. stopping by. Bye.